I'm Bo Searcy. Our health assessment group project today is going to be on Vietnamese Americans. The Vietnamese American population is growing every day. It's a population that many nurses will, will encounter at one point or another while they're providing care to patients. Whenever you're providing care to a Vietnamese patient, it's very important that you understand uh, some of the things that their culture considers normal and also some of the things that their culture may prohibit. It's also important that you understand some of the disease processes and things like that that are, are common and prevalent among Vietnamese Americans. So our goal of our project today is to inform you about some of those things. Here's Keisha Bird. She's going to cover some information for you. So we should understand the cultural phenomena impacting healthcare. It's important that nurses are able to um, understand communication practices, um, their dietary patterns, family patterns, health beliefs and practices, and prevalent disease processes. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. First, it's um, important that we understand what communication is. It's just a way that we transmit information. This can be um, verbally or nonverbal. Verbal would include speech, and nonverbal is anything other than speech or body language. So um, it's the activity of conveying information through the exchange of thoughts, messages, or um, information. Um, it's a mechanism through which individuals are able to establish relationships as well. Okay. The Vietnamese American communication is a little different from ours. Um, obviously, their primary language is going to be Vietnamese, and this language is um, spoken fast and soft. Um, there are several dialects, so we have to be um, cautious about who we get to interpret for them because they're different dialects, and we want to make sure that we um, choose the right one. Um, most of their words are going to be one-syllable words. Um, they will combine two one-syllable words to form one word. So. We have to be careful when we're communicating. English is the um, secondary language and it's mostly known by their second generation that were born here in America. Um, they are private people, so um, stuff that we would deem appropriate, um, like hugging somewhere in public, um, this would be um, deemed um, something that they would not do only in the privacy of their home. Um, they also have a high level of self-control. Um, men wouldn't greet women unless the woman initiates it, so we don't want to take offense to anything like that. Um, they do not um, express personal feelings openly, so if we go in and try to ask certain questions during assessment, we have to take into consideration that they may or may not explain that to us openly. Um, so they're typically, typically not going to complain, complain of any pain or discomfort, so we have to find other ways to discover how they're feeling. Um, like most of the Asian cultures, um, eye contact is deemed disrespectful, so we don't want to, you know, take um, offense to that either. Um, and we need to understand that silence for them can mean negative emotions or expressions, so it's not, you know, how we would just deem a silent um, time in our conversation. So as nurses, we need to make certain interventions for this culture. Um, we need to understand and respect their communication values and um, understand that they're going to be a little different from ours. We need to communicate using clear, concise wording, making sure that we explain you know, everything clearly. Um, explain words that have multiple meanings because in their language, you know, it probably just means one thing. So we need to be able to make sure that we're versatile in that area. And avoid really close any questions because, um, for an example, like if we were to say, um, Yes, for in our language that just means in agreement, um, but for them it would just pretty much be like a way to just please you to get you on with your conversation. So we need to be aware to ask an open-ended question that way they can further explain how they're feeling. And also um, they have certain um, preferences when it comes to an interpreter. Um, they want it to be the same sex as them and also not a member of the family. So even though that may be um, easier for us to just grab someone in the family, they would prefer it um, to be someone who's not a part of their family but is the same sex as them. And these are my references. I'm going to discuss the uh, Vietnamese American diet briefly with you. Uh, some quick facts about the Vietnamese American diet. Uh, rice is a, is a staple of every meal they consume. Rice is, rice is abundant in the Vietnamese American diet. Um, 
vegetables and fruits are also very abundant. That's what they snack on. They don't have, uh, they don't eat junk food like a lot of more traditional Americans might. They prefer uh, fruits and vegetables. And then they also eat beef, chicken, pork, and fish, just about any type of meat. Uh, but they eat it in a lot lesser amount than they would say the rice and the vegetables. Uh, as far as beverages go, Vietnamese Americans, they, they prefer coffee and green tea and water. Uh, most of the time when they drink their coffee, they don't add any uh, cream or sugar or anything like that. They just drink it black. And then another, another point here I thought I needed to make was fish sauce. Fish sauce is apparently a huge deal to them. The man that we interviewed for our project, uh, when I asked him about the diet, that was the very first thing he said was, we eat fish sauce. He mentioned that before he mentioned rice. So fish sauce is a really big deal. You can use it for a dipping sauce. You can use it as a marinade. Uh, they use it for, for pretty much everything. Uh, Vietnamese American diet is, is very similar to Chinese food. They prepare their food in a very similar way. Most of the food they prepare is fried, but they don't use very much uh, fat or oil when they're frying their food, so it, it's more healthy than traditional uh, Western, uh, Western food, when the Western fried food. And Vietnamese Americans, they use a lot of spices and herbs. So a lot of their, their, they, they, they do like a spicier food. And also the spices and herbs are used as garnishments, not just for flavor, but they're, they're used as garnishments to make the presentation of the meal more appealing. Uh, one thing you won't find a lot in Vietnamese American foods is dairy products. A lot of Vietnamese Americans are lactose intolerant. This is something that's very important for a nurse to know whenever you're providing care to a Vietnamese American client. You want to be mindful of the fact that there's a very good chance uh, that they're going to be lactose intolerant and can't have a lot of dairy products. Uh, a couple of potential health risks with Vietnamese American diet. It's typically pretty low in protein. Now I did say before that they eat, they eat meat, they eat fish, pork, things like that, but they don't eat very much of it. So that causes their diet to be low in protein. Uh, also, there are certain foods, uh, ginger, and, and some other, other types of foods that many Vietnamese American women will avoid whenever they're eating, or when they're, when they're pregnant. Um, and a lot of Vietnamese American women don't gain enough weight during pregnancy. So that will also, that'll lead to uh, low birth weight in many Vietnamese American babies. Something else about Vietnamese American infants is they are not, first off, they have the low birth weight, so that kind of kind of sways their normal growth curve whenever you're trying to determine their developmental level. Also, uh, Vietnamese, many of them are aged according to a lunar calendar. So it's not the same as the traditional Western chronological calendar. So you might actually have a, a newborn baby that they're calling a year old because they're born in a certain month of the year. So... Vietnamese Americans do have some foods that are prohibited at certain times. Uh, getting back to their, they're on a lunar calendar schedule. So it's not like the traditional Western chronological calendar. So during the, on the first day and the middle day of, of most months, many Vietnamese Americans will, will not consume um, seafood, chicken, eggs, a lot of things that they normally would eat, they won't consume on these particular days because that's, that's also in accordance with the uh, Buddhist religion. That's, that's part of Buddhism, is the avoidance of certain foods on these days. Uh, there are some common disease processes that are present in Vietnamese Americans. Hypertension, which is defined as a uh, diastolic pressure of 140 or greater, or a, and a systolic pressure of 90 or greater. Uh, high blood pressure, it's very common. Also liver cancer. It's very common in Vietnamese Americans. Uh, when we spoke to, when we conducted the interview, uh, we asked the, the, the man that we interviewed, we asked him what are some common you know, disease processes, and those are the first two things he said were liver cancer and hypertension. And I said, why do you think that is? I said, because I, I feel like you will probably have a pretty healthy meal or, or diet. And he said that many cases of hypertension and liver cancer are caused by lifestyle choices. A lot of them smoke, and a lot of Vietnamese Americans uh, consume alcohol. So he said that was his explanation as to why those are prevalent disease processes. And these are my references.
I'm Raya Martin, and I'm going to be talking about the Viet um, Vietnamese Americans' family patterns. Um, their family values are um, in Vietnamese American culture. Family is highly um, is valued highly and plays a central role in the culture. The family is often extended and includes married sons and daughter-in-laws and unmarried adult daughters and grandchildren. So, um, family roles in the traditional Vietnamese home would be traditional family structure and would be um, patriarchal with the eldest male as the decision maker and family um, spokesman. Wives care for their home and make um, family health care decisions. Elder, elders are highly respected and honored and children are expected to obey them. Um, obligations are made and decisions are made based on the common good, usually under the guidance of the eldest male. Um, in traditional homes, individualism is discouraged in favor of family responsibilities that promote interdependence and belonging and support. Family roles as Vietnamese Americans um, in America itself. Um, as Viet, um, Vietnamese people assimilate into America or in the United States, gender roles in the Vietnamese family slowly reverse. Because of the availability of jobs in the Western society, women um, gain more economic independence outside the home and women and children who adapt to Western society more quickly than men can increase their authority in the family, thus rising position. Um, Vietnamese have um, diverse religious beliefs such as Buddhism, Confucianism, um, Taoism, Christianity, um, Islam, Hinduism, and in the United States, about one third of Vietnam, Vietnamese are Catholic and the remainder are Buddhist. And those are my references. Um, hello everyone, I'm Jakia Adams and I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, American Vietnamese health beliefs and their health practices. Um, they believe in fatalism, which is life is predetermined and illness is a punishment for a wrongdoing. Um, good health is equated with harmony and hot and cold and they don't necessarily mean in temperatures. Like, you just have to understand that um, so, like things that they would consider hot sometimes may be their medications and things that they may consider cold may be their medications. It just depends on the illness that they're dealing with at that point in time. Um, health practices. Um, family is the main provider of care. Um, they prefer same-sex health care providers and they believe that Western medicine is effective but not always accurate for them. Um, some use folk healers and pre prohibit female touching by health care providers. And some may use a dog to explain and indicate the problem that they're experiencing at that moment. Um, they have some traditional techniques that they use for healing. And one was, well, these are a couple that I found interesting. It was coining. And it's basically a repeated stroke with a coin. And they have some kind of oil on it or something. And it's a repeated stroke until they form a bruise. And then you have cupping, which literally they have hot fire in a cup, and they just put it on their skin and it sucks up their skin. And they use it because they think that it um, rids unwanted hot energy. And then pitching, which is literally them just pitching them their skin um, in the place where they think that the illness is occurring. Um, and it leaves um, bruises, and they use it to get rid of headaches and sore throats. And this is a picture of coining, and this is a picture of cupping.